Why don't we, uh, why don't we get started then? I plan a talk that uh, is, uh, is about the spine. I want to go over some of the basic anatomy and a lot of the, uh, the spine uh, parts are simple and I want to go over it in a simplistic uh, fashion and to understand the, uh, the, the way that the spine works and how it changes as we, as we age. So back pain in general is something that is extremely common. It's probably second only to the common cold as to a reason why someone would come to the doctors. And 80% of all of us are gonna have at least one significant episode of back pain that keeps us out of our usual activities of work or school or whatever we're doing uh, for, a, for an appreciable degree of time. So it's, it can be something very prevalent and very significant. When it is longer term, it can cause a major reason for disability, particularly in this age group and in a working age group, and it does cut a work life short in, in some situations. And when these things happen, it is something that costs our economy quite a bit of money. If someone's out of work for an entire year, low chance of return. So there is some population, although it's a small population, of people that may have troubles with their back that keeps them out of the workforce altogether. Why do people have back pain? What, what gives them more risk? Well, smoking is a risk, and that's one other thing that we can add to uh, risk of smoking, including uh, uh, heart disease and uh, lung disease and cancers and things like that. Smoking can be a significant issue with regard to back pain also. Anxiety, stress can be a reason. So uh, I'll ask people if they have stress because sometimes that can be a, an appreciable factor. Activities that require a lot of bending, lifting, twisting may be associated with higher incidence activities that are involved with twisting and bending. That puts more pressure on the spine than other things do. There was a study that I'll always, uh, always remember, mostly because I don't know how they got these people to uh, volunteer or get paid for the study, but it was done in Sweden and they put pressure monitors in people's discs. They put it through the back, through the skin, and into the, into the vertebral disc, and they monitored the pressure as those people would walk and stand and lie down and sit and lift. And it turns out that anything that has a bending motion to it, sitting or bending to lift things, puts more pressure than just standing or walking or lying down does. If you add a weight to that bend, that puts more pressure on the disc. If you add a weight away from you, even more pressure on the disc, and the highest pressures came with weight away from you and then twisting. So if we all keep that in mind, I think if you, if you have back pain or not, if you keep in mind that that is, a, that is a position that puts a lot of stress on the back, you know, try to remember to hold things close to you. Try to bend with your knees and legs if you can. And when you do turn with a weight, you know, try to take the extra seconds to turn first before you put it down. And those things can be helpful. Um, credit card debt, it's interesting, statistically made a difference. <laughs> you know, this one, I, I, I think this one is up for a uh, review because statistically they didn't see a difference with back pain. However, more recently the Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons looked at arthritis in general, in hip arthritis and knee arthritis, and found a definite association. It was something that if somebody had a knee or hip arthritis and they lost, you know, not a lot, maybe five pounds or 10 pounds, there is a statistical difference with how much pain that they would experience. And so it may just not have been identified in the study with the, uh, with the spine. Does it make a difference if you're male or female? Bone spurs, I'll, I'll often be asked about bone spurs on an x-ray. The bone spurs don't cause back pain and they don't predispose to back pain. They're a result of some wear and tear change, some extra swelling in the back, the spurs form, and the bone spur shows up on an x-ray. But it's not, necessar it's not specifically symptomatic. That's good, alcohol consumption doesn't make a difference, long distance driving, uh, I mean running, and then the driving, one study looked at twins, one twin was a long distance truck driver, the other twin wasn't, 
and they didn't see a difference in that. So the uh, long distance sitting and, and, uh, and pounding didn't make a difference. Now, this slide is good to look at for, for a couple of minutes, just so we can all get an idea of the spine and how it's made, how it was designed. The interesting things here are that one is that the bones are lined up one on top of the other. And in between is the disc. And that makes sense because it's a good cushion. And when we're newborn babies, this cushion is 90% water. So it's a great cushion. And so you never see infants or young people with any disc troubles because it's so hydrated and it's such a good cushion and it, that it works very, very well. The other thing is that we're designed with a little bit of curve to the spine. And this is the model here in front of us. Um, it's not a straight rod like this, like this metal is. If, it, if we were a straight rod, and thankfully we're not, we would put a lot more pressure in each, each segment. But we can dissipate the forces when it curves in at, the, in at the neck, out at the thoracic spine, in at the lumbar spine, out at the sacral spine, and it gives a little bit more resilience to the spine. As we get a little bit older, as we get into 20s, 30s, 40s, the disc may lose a little bit of its water content. It's not as hydrated. And that is a, a picture here where a degenerative disc. It may have the wall of the disc get a little crack in it. And that may be something that's, pa that's painful. It may get a little thinner. It may have a, a, a break in the wall of the disc so you get a bulging disc. And that bulging disc can go in the area where the spinal cord is traveling and push on a nerve, and that can cause some nerve pain. If it's a larger bulging disc, it could be a herniated disc. And so we see this type of thing in that age group, largely 30s, 40s, 50s. And when this disc degenerates, it can be a cause of back pain in general. When it herniates through a, a tear in the wall of the disc, it can push on a nerve of the spinal cord coming down. You can see every level has another nerve root that's leaving. So if it pushes on a nerve root, these lower nerves all are leaving the spine and they form the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve goes right in the back of the buttock, right where you sit on it. It's probably about as big as your thumb and it's made up of the lower lumbar nerves. It then goes into the leg. And each component of that sciatic nerve is made up a diff of a different nerve that goes to a different place in the foot and, and leg. So if somebody came to the office and they had pain in the sciatic nerve and it's traveling down the entire leg and it goes into, let's say, the side of the calf and then it goes over to the top of the foot. Well, that's a clue of that being the L5 nerve root because that goes, that's the distribution of the L5 nerve root. It also goes to the strength of the big toe going up and if that's weak, then you could say, boy, that L5 nerve root is irritated, and probably that herniated disc is at a particular level, the L4-5 disc level. If it goes to the back of the calf, and the Achilles reflexes out, and somebody can't walk up on their tiptoes because they're, they're on the weak side, then that would tell me it's probably the S1 nerve root. If it goes into the front of the thigh and the front of the shin and they don't have a quadriceps reflex mm -hmm. and they may have a little bit of weakness bringing their ankle up or straightening their leg, that may be the L4 nerve root. So there's a, there's a definite anatomic map to where a leg, a leg symptom may be. So that's, that happens in that age group. As we get older than that, 60s, 70s, 80s, we can develop more of the wear and tear changes that are not necessarily painful. Just because we have wear and tear doesn't mean it's a painful process. And in fact, the older age groups, if you get into uh, you know, uh, 80s, 90s, they tend not to have as much back pain as somebody's 50s and 60s because it may have degenerated to the point where instead of having microscopic motion, it may settle down some and have a little bit more stability and not, and not be as painful. Also in the older age groups, the 
the arthritis can develop in the joints behind the spine. These are facet joints in the back of the spine. And those facet joints can take up a little room for where the spinal cord is traveling. And when the spinal cord is going through a narrow spot, that's called spinal stenosis. Stenosis is narrowing. And when the nerves go through a narrow spot, then they can cause some leg pains on their own. Basically, it's a design that really is miraculous, but there are places where it can break down and a more, little more commonly in different age groups.